In this video, my attempt is to share some essential tips that will help you excel in your ICS economics exam. I plan to discuss not only the important tips to be kept in mind while attempting the paper, but also certain strategies even when you are preparing for the exam. These are the key important tips according to me. To understand how to apply these tips, I have picked up few past board paper questions. This would help you to remember and understand each tip better. I will be also discussing extra tricks while discussing these questions. Therefore, don't skip any part of the video. In the end of the video, I will be sharing few bonus tips. So make sure that you watch the whole video. Let's start. First step is that we should pay attention to the keywords while preparing our definitions. I know that it requires skill of rote learning, but this shows understanding of the basic concepts to the examiner and gets you score easily. Also, it is important to write complete and full definition to score full marks. For example, in this past board paper question, the most common error made by the students is that they usually forget to write the keywords like rights and duties in their answer. They also need to pay attention to the keywords when writing definitions. Another common mistake is that the students, instead of defining consumer awareness, discuss various rights of the consumers, which shows lack of understanding of the basic concept. This question I have picked up to point out that you need to keep in mind that definitions are not just rote learning, but they also depict your depth of conceptual understanding. Most of the students, instead of writing that overdraft implies the overdrawing from a current account, tend to write that it means the withdrawal of the amount from the account. Many students fail to mention here that in case of an overdraft, interest is charged by the banks on the amount overdrawn. And many students also fail to write the key term current account. Make sure that you don't make these mistakes. Second tip is that avoid oversimplifying your language. Use specific economic terms. This adds credibility to your answers and shows your deep engagement with the subject. Think of it as speaking the language of economics. We learn about monetary policy in central banking chapter. This is an example from there. You can pause the video here to understand the difference between simplified language and economic jargon. This is an example of a question from past paper where I have tried to apply that tip. The first explanation, if you look at the question carefully, is without the use of economic terminology. And the second definition is with the use of none. Obviously, the second one will get you full marks without any doubt. Pay attention to these words, these terms. It's important. Another powerful tool at your disposal is the use of diagrams and graphs. Diagrams and graphs are not just visual aids. They are crucial for illustrating complex economic relationships. Presentation matters. Use a ruler for straight lines to keep your work neat and professional. Avoid vague references like in the left figure. Be specific in your illustrations. Don't just draw diagrams half-heartedly. Explain what they illustrate. Accuracy is key. If you are discussing demand or supply, mention what is being supplied. Be it wheat or water or any other commodity. And always, always label your access. It's important. It need to be done clearly. Use arrows to indicate changes in variables. This makes your diagrams more informative. Remember, a well-labeled diagram with correct arrows can significantly convey your understanding, especially when you are short on time. This question I took as an example because I want to bring to your notice that how precision is important in the diagrams and you need to pay attention to minute details. What is being taken on OX axis? What variable is on the OY axis? Label them in complete words as we discussed in the previous slide. A few of us, instead of shift in demand, make the graph of movement from one point to another. 
Some students do not give a diagrammatic representation, though this is what is specifically asked in the question that illustrate your answer with a diagram. These are very important points to be kept in mind while you are preparing and going through questions at the back of the chapter. Another very important tip I can share is that arrows in a diagram, especially in demand or supply, play a very, very important role in showing your conceptual clarity to the examiner. In this question, you can actually score five marks just by drawing a perfect diagram with correct notation and a one-line explanation. This question I picked up to show the silly mistakes we tend to make while drawing diagrams. Some students do not write the degree and symbol of elasticity. Some of us do not name the axes, while a few of us do not write what each axis is measuring. A few students get confused between the concept of elasticity of demand and elasticity of supply. Now, according to me, these type of chapters need to be practiced actively with the paper and pen in your hands. Practice each curve. Pay attention to where the curve is starting from. For example, in the unitary elasticity of supply curve should start from the origin. Make sure that you understand the reasons for the shapes of these curves while preparing. Keeping these steps in mind will help you to be very, very precise and clear while you are attempting the paper and it will also help you to manage your time well. Don't get confused between greater than or less than symbols when you are preparing especially these type of topics. This is another important tip. Economics is about probabilities. Avoid you were using the word will. Instead opt for phrases like may or could lead to. This is a good question to understand what I am trying to say in the above tip. If you pay attention to the answer here, you will notice that I have used the words may or could in both these points. Another bonus tip I want to mention that these type of questions are good to test your depth of understanding. Avoid making the mistake of writing about the impact of inflation on the economy when the question clearly says that you need to explain the impact on producers and salaried class. When you are preparing the chapter on inflation, pay attention to minute details while revising. Draw a chain of thought in your mind like a story and then prepare. Now, for example, in this question, while talking about the impact of producers, you have two points to be discussed, that value of their stock could rise and they are usually the borrowers. And we know that borrowers tend to gain during inflation. This is a long answer carrying five marks. You need to explain both of these points in detail to get maximum marks. These type of answers actually show your logical thinking and analytical skills to the examiner and creates a good impression. I have taken these extra questions where I feel we can discuss various important aspects to be kept in mind while you are preparing for the exam to avoid the silly errors or mistakes. These are important questions and these questions can also become the benchmark for you to tackle various other similar questions. It is pertinent to read the question carefully and answer them according to what is asked. For example, in this question, many students write about demand instead of the assumption of this law of supply. Some students explain about factors of supply affecting a commodity but fail to mention it as an assumption while other things become, remain constant. You might come across the concept of ceteris paribus or assumptions of demand, which is not clear to many students. These keywords or concepts are economic jargon or language of economics, which an examiner would be expecting from you. I took this question to emphasize on the importance of writing both the definition and the formula or a diagram wherever required. Don't forget to mention the keywords like percentage change or responsiveness in the definition of price elasticity of demand. I always advise children to write the definition and the formula 
even though it may not be asked. For example, the law of demand question in 10 ICS is another common question where the students lose marks because they forget to give a simple diagram to accompany the law of demand definition. Many students, instead of explaining characteristics of capital, tend to write the functions of capital. Remember, there is a difference between the meaning of the terms functions and characteristics. Understand and then learn the points. Don't mix them. Bonus tip. Also notice that the board expects you to not miss the headings. You can lose marks if you miss on the subheadings. This is another question I took from the past papers to highlight that your preparation needs to be in depth. The common error made in this type of question is that many students write about lack of double coincidence of bonds where when we have asked of for lack of common measure of value. Most of the students instead of the problem of deferred payment write about its solution. Therefore, while preparing, pay attention to the explanation of these points and make sure that you write the correct explanation in the exam. This is another tricky question which confuses the students if they don't pay attention. Some students define demand pull inflation instead of defining cost push inflation. A few students even mix up the causes of both demand pull and cost push. They might end up writing one from demand pull and one cause from cost push. So pay attention to these factors also while you are preparing for the exam. Now let me give you a few bonus tricks and tips which I had promised you in the beginning of the video. Avoid selective study, meaning don't just pick up on few chapters believing in your luck. It has happened many times that the questions are concentrated only on few chapters in the board paper. So you cannot afford to miss out any topic or any chapter. You should at least have minimum two to three revisions thoroughly because there are so many points to be memorized. Recap will help you to retain better and give you confidence while writing the paper. Learn different difficult concepts by making a flowchart or a mind map. Flowcharts or mind maps help us to retain information better. It is like a visual aid. For example, while preparing the topic on quantitative methods of credit control, you come across open market operations where we talk about buying or selling of securities as a method of credit control by RBI. Writing the logical steps in this form on the side when you are preparing that explanation will always help you to retain this information better. Adopting these type of practices while preparing tricks really help a lot. These are few bonus tips while you are writing the paper. Whenever you have to write differences between two questions, always, always use a tabular form. As I had already mentioned earlier, do not waste time in giving extra points. Third tip is, analyze what is asked in the chosen question. Plan, organize your thoughts and then answer to the point. For example, in money chapter, where you need to be thorough with explanation or consumer awareness chapter, where you can get confused between ways of exploitation or reasons of exploitation. You should pay attention while you are writing the answers also because you tend to get confused. Support your concepts with examples. I have taken a few sample questions from the past papers, but this approach can be applied to various other questions. With these strategies in your toolkit, you are well on your way to mastering your economics exam. Believe in yourself. Remember, it's not just about what you know. It's about how you present it. Wish you all the good luck. Do well. You can follow and subscribe to my channel to get more videos related to economics. They will help you even in your coming years. Thank you.